Well, good morning. As you're finding your seats, I tell you, I, I love just uh, conversations. Uh, I've been in some church buildings where it's so quiet, nobody converses. And, uh, I love fellowship. I love community, and I love the gathering that we have. So glad that you're here on this kind of nasty day outside. I invite you to stand with us as we've been going through this year, been doing memory verses each week. And we, we start with a shorter one, and last time we had a really long one. So I thought I'd, I'd make it easier on you. And next slide, Chris. All right. All right, everybody remember I said Jesus wept. John eleven thirty five. But But with all verses that we do, that's not a memory verse. It's just, but, but whatever verse we look at, um, it's always good to know the context around it. Uh, what's the context there? Anybody know? Lazarus had died. And Jesus had come back after three days, and he wept. And so it's a great story uh, found in John chapter 11. But, but that's not our memory verse. Our memory verse is this one. All right, which I love this verse, because I love the first part. It talks about who God is. And the second part are the things that we, we benefit because of the first part of him, of who he is. So let's read this together. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. First Chronicles 16:27. So this is in the Old Testament back when Israel was uh, was on the earth and very strong, growing, declining, obeying, disobeying. But it was a great truth that was shared about who God is, and, and it's the same thing for us. I love it. There's two things and two things. One are before Him, one are in His place, and so those are great qualities, characteristics of God that never, ever change. And so, especially the joy. Uh, we need joy. And so that's what we're going to begin singing today is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.
This weather outside, sometimes we just feel it, right? We feel it from the life that's around us. Uh, we feel it because of the oppression, suppression, uh, our pridefulness, our own sinfulness at times. We just feel it so down. But God is the God of love. God is the God who lifts us up. And one of my favorite psalms talks about God lifts up our head. When we're down, he lifts up our face so we can see him, first of all. But we can know him, know his joy that he's given to us. So let's continue singing with this great hymn, Love Lifted.
I need lifting. You know, and I think I think about these things. If I fall down, I'm a pretty big guy. It's going to take a lot to lift me. But in sinfulness, it took so much more. And God is all powerful. And I love that no matter what kind of weights we're under, no matter what kind of whatever we're going through, God can lift us up. That's why we call out to Him. And that's why we gather. Again, looking at this verse that we shared last week of 1 Peter chapter 2, talking to us as a church. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. So that, why is all that? So that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you're God's people. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy because love lifted us. The love of God through Jesus Christ lifted us. And that's why we're here. That's why we praise him. That's why we live. That's why we have our existence. It's because of who God is, his greatness, and what he has done for us. Let's go, Lord, in prayer as we continue. Father, I do thank you for this. God, we thankful. God, we can't understand fully who we were in our sinfulness, what we had waiting for us in your wrath against our sin. But thank you, God, that you sent Jesus for us so that through faith in what he did on the cross, God, we can know you, we can be reconciled to you, we can be living in freedom, we have been redeemed, we have been forgiven because of what Jesus did. But God, now because of that, you have called us, and God, you've given us a gift of praising you, living for you. And so, Lord, I pray that we would do that. We would rely upon you. We call upon you for that help that we need every single moment of our life. We thank you that we can gather as a church to do this, to gain that encouragement and strength, to ask one another to pray for us, God, to learn from you, to sing praises you together, to, to experience the joy uh, that only we can know because of you. And Lord, I thank you that you've done that for us. I pray, God, that we would realize what you've given to us, that we live in obedience to you, and Father, that we we we'll just rely upon you for every moment of our life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue singing this great song, this great truth. It's a newer song, but we've sung it a few times. It just talks about we live in him, but it is his strength that gives that to us. Yeah. 
Jerusalem, please get your worship bags. Continuing on in our letter to the Ephesians, a book in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, that is written after Jesus is born, all the way to when Jesus comes back, the prophecies about that, and he is. Um, it was a letter that Paul, who was a, a, a Christian who was saved out of religion, um, through the Jewish religion specifically, into a fellowship and faith in a walk with Jesus Christ. Because of that transformation, he had been going around many, many places teaching people about how to live for, how to love, how to, to serve Jesus through faith in what he did on the cross. And so he was in this place called Ephesus, and he's writing a letter back to them to bring them encouragement, to continue to teach them about Jesus. And so last week, as we've been continuing through the study, we looked at uh, Made to Serve, uh, in those two different areas. And what were the areas? Do you remember? Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Thank you for my crew in the front. Yeah. <laughs> Inside and outside. Inside your family, outside your family. Inside your school, outside your school. Inside your comfort zone and outside your comfort zone. Inside your likes and outside your dislikes. So that Jesus would be made known because we have been made to serve. We have been made to serve. And we looked at that as using that M-A-D-E that we, God has called us into ministry. All of us, not just this guy up here, all of us in the ministry. Uh, he is, oh my goodness, the A just left me. Uh, what's that A? <laughs> action, that's what it is. Action, I got it. We, we, we're not just to be sitting, wow. It's the humidity, it's what it is. Not my age or anything like that. Uh, call it to action. It's not just sitting all the Prayer is action. Going is action. I mean, it's, it's not a, just a sitting serving that we do. And we are the determined, no matter the cost. That's what Paul, and he'll we'll look at that again today. No matter the cost, continue to serve and be these people of encouragement as we continue on. And so we did made to serve. And then last week, made to serve. And this week, made to serve. English is a weird language, you know that? <laughs> made to serve. This is an also serve. That's tied to the other ones. But it's bringing the service to an area that we really don't think about a whole lot. God has made us to serve, yes, in our communities, but somewhere beyond this too. And so, let's look at this. We're looking at four verses and go back, go back and break them down just a little bit. So Ephesians chapter 3, verses 10 to 13. This is so that God's multifaceted wisdom may now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavens. This is according to his eternal purpose accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. So then, Paul's writing to these Christian friends, I ask you not to be discouraged over my afflictions on your behalf, for they are for your glory. So we'll start with this verse and then go back. Paul, Paul has been beaten. He's been arrested. He's been shunned. At one time, people threw rocks at him till perhaps he was dead, but God saved and brought his life back. He had gone through so much, and so right now he's even in prison. He's under arrest. And he's, he's telling these people, don't, don't worry about me. Because again, he's determined. He knows that he's been called for this. He knew that this was a rough way that he was going to be going. We are not promised any kind of greatness. We're not promised all blessings. We're not promised anything when we follow Christ. We will face persecution. Jesus said, if you love me, they're going to persecute you. He says that. 
You're, you're not going to have your great life now because of Christ. God's going to bless you. He's going to bring you blessings that you've never seen before. But sometimes they're not the blessings that we think we deserve. But what we deserve is nothing. But God gives us everything in the spiritual realms. He gives us himself, especially in Christ. And so they've been kind of distressed about what Paul's going through. Maybe thinking, Paul, if you would have stayed with us, you wouldn't have had all these troubles. Paul, if you just toned it down, you wouldn't have all these persecutions. And he said, Paul's like, don't, don't fret about me. I'm following Christ on the path, my course, that God has called me to do. But it's for your glory. It's so that you would be built up. That's why he's writing this letter. So you would follow Christ more. And that's why we go through the scriptures. I don't just give here a motivational speech because that is nothing that gets your emotions up but not your life change. That's why the scriptures do this. That's why the word of God is alive and, and more powerful than any two-edged sword because it comes in and it cuts out stuff that doesn't need to be there. It brings in stuff that is, is so good for us and brings us more joy, more peace, more hope that is true joy, hope, and peace. And not what the world says. So Paul is first saying, hey, it's, it's okay. And so this, the verse we started off with really is a mind-blowing verse that we don't think about much. And maybe it didn't even hit you as I read through it, but it's, it's verse 10. As Paul says, we've been made to serve. So this is so that God's multifaceted wisdom, wisdom may now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavens. What? He's talking about in the spiritual realm. We, we don't see it. We don't really understand it. And we know that God is there, but there's also angels and there are demons. And Paul is saying that this is being made known through the church to angels and to demons. Angels, by the way, were created by God they are not humans who died and have now become angels. We do not become angels. We do not gain wings when we die. Angels were created by God at the beginning of creation or somewhere back then. And we do not become angels. We are not them. We are God's special creation, humans, the climax of creation back in Genesis we find that out. And by the way, most angels don't even have wings. If you read the scriptures, we did a study here recently down on Wednesday nights about this. But these angels God created, and a third of the angels rebelled against God, and God kicked them out of heaven. That's what we call demons now, fallen angels. Again, you know, that's so far beyond what we can think. It's a different realm that we are that we are used to. It's not a physical realm, although sometimes there's physical properties that way, but it's it's different. It says that God's multifaceted of wisdom may be now made known through the church. I sent out a question on our texting group, and again, if you if you're not part of that group and you'd like to be part of that group, just hand me your name and your telephone number. And we send it out, not many texts we send out. But this is the question I sent out. In your opinion, basically, what do others think of New Hope? Don't answer out loud. Sometimes I'd like those answers, sometimes I wouldn't. But then the qualified and about our love for Jesus and our love for them. And as I said, I hope you looked at that and go, hmm, you thought about it a little bit at least. And that's why I send them out, just get our minds thinking. I mean, so what, what does Cole Valley think about New Hope? What, what, is, what do your neighbors know about New Hope? Maybe they don't know anything <laughs> where you live. About our love for Jesus, they, do they know that? Do they just know us up here on this hill? Do they know that we love them? Do they see that? And it's a good thing to think these questions out as how we operate, how we how we live for God here and move out. 
But do we ever think about what Paul just wrote about as our witness in the spiritual realm? To be honest, me, I don't. Until I read a verse like this or some other verses. Because I'm used to this physical realm. I, I see it all the time. I live in it all the time. But we're also living in the spiritual realm that we don't see. Um, angels, by the way, Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, all his angels of great strength, who do his word, obedient to his command. So the angels are obedient to God's calling, what he sends them to do. I, I, I'm not going to go into that, but he, they do multi things for us, for him. They're always praising him, but he sends them on missions at times. And we never know because they, again, it's, it's so different than us. In Hebrews, it says, don't neglect to show hospitality out here in this realm here. For by doing this, some have welcomed angels as guests without knowing it. Okay. That's weird. You may have helped a stranger sometime, and it wasn't human. Now, there's some people that take that really extreme. Because I believe this is truth. I don't think it happens to everybody. But sometimes angels cross over to our realm for God's purpose for his ways. And so the writer here is just saying, be hospitable to people because you may be crossing realms. Again, don't go to extremes on that. That's just the truth that is there in the scriptures. All right, we're not to worship angels. We're not to magnify angels. We worship God, the creator of angels. We magnify God, the creator of angels, who's above all angels. But Paul is saying here, as we get back to Ephesians, this is so God's multifaceted wisdom may be made known through the church to that realm. And there's different levels of authority or responsibilities of angels, and that's what's talking about there. So serving to is understanding in our brain that we are being watched. A spiritual realm watches us. And again, I don't understand that, but it's what the word says. And this does not say, all right, big churches do this. They're always looking at the big churches, because they're big churches, you know. It doesn't say they're only looking at Baptist churches, either. It says that God's wisdom may now be made known through the church. So as we are serving inside and outside, people are watching us. But sometimes that audience is even greater. And, and it is so neat to me that we, men, women, children, serving God, sometimes in different realms, higher education, lower education, higher finances, lower finances, different cultures, we who've been redeemed, who've been forgiven, who've been lifted by the love, who've been made new, who've been united in Christ, now have an opportunity, a calling, this, this gifting that God has given to us, given to us, to shine even more than we ever thought possible. New hope, serving, and angels and demons are watching. To see what God has done in us and through us. Again, this is, this is just a different message. But it's, that's why I like preaching through books in the Bible, because it gets to things that are like, wow, that's, that's different. But it's the truth here. And so when we are, are praising God and, and living and serving him, wanting his name to be made known, wanting to help those who are out there who are on, on, the, on so much 
in trials and hopelessness. Angels are watching and going, this is amazing. God, look what you've done. And demons are probably watching and go, this stinks. But then on the flip side, if we're a church who just wants to be just for us, just on the inside, the angels are going, what's up? I thought, God, that you'd redeem them, that you'd change them. And the demons are going, yeah, that's comfortable. Stay there. I mean, again, I don't know all of that. I don't know what's there. So my, my limited mind just thinks those things. If we are showing God's wisdom through us, his changing through us to that realm, that's where my mind goes. And we do this with God even personally. We, there, there's some phrases that people hold on to too tightly. And that's one of those is God's house. Because, I mean, I understand what we're calling it, but some people believe that God, this is where he lives. When we were in Missouri serving there, I've shared this, this story before. One of my neighbors who've been witnessing to just signed. I mean, he, he was just lost. He needed Christ. And at times he would come and, hey, and he'd talk to you. But he always wanted to cross. We live right next to the church in the parsonage of the house there. And he said, let's cross the street because I don't want to be next to the church as I tell you these evil things. Because that's where God lived. Cross the street, God wasn't there. It's okay to share those things. And But we live that way at times. When we're wanting to tell somebody off, we don't believe that God is right there with us, not in practice. Because if we, if we really knew that God was with us and in us, we wouldn't say, do those things. But at that moment, God, you're there, I'm here, I'm doing this. Insane or doing or whatever. God, because I'm just by myself. But God is everywhere, and I love that about God, and I hate that about God, you know. Because sometimes I don't want that conviction, but I'm very glad that he never leaves me, he never forsakes me. That's what David wrote, man, if I go to the bottom, you're there, if I go up there, you're there. Man, if we have the opportunity to go to Mars, man, what a great experience. God's there already, you know. He's everywhere. Angels are not like that. Angels aren't omnipresent, as that word is for God. They are finite beings, but they're spiritual beings, so they can move really quick, according to scriptures. But they can't read our minds, but they definitely can see our actions. So as a church, we're a witness to them, you know, the angels or demons. When we choose to gather as a church, it's a witness to them. When we choose not to gather, it's a witness to them. If we put gathering as a low priority, and this or that or them or this is a higher priority than gathering, or if it's that's rainy. Eh, I'm not going to gather. I mean, I'm that way too. Trust me. This would be a great day to sleep. Just stay in bed and look, you know. But God has called us. Now, you know me, I'm not a checklist. But where are our priorities? And, and again, the spiritual realm looks at that. Because it's raining, I don't go to church. And then somebody calls you up, yeah, let's go fishing. You know, or something like that, whatever it is. And I'm not picking on any of those things. But, but this gathering, this witness as we are to the spiritual realm is also a witness to the physical realm. And that speaks. If we're supposed to be speaking to the multifaceted wisdom of God through us to the spiritual realm and to the physical realm, how are we speaking? Because, let me tell you the truth. When we choose not to gather, in Hebrews it says, as the habit of some are doing, we put ourselves in, in danger because of the spiritual realm. First Peter, Peter's writing about this. First Peter 5, 8. Be sober-minded, be alert, because your adversary, the devil, Satan, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. I like, most of the time, watching wildlife videos 
And if you ever watch the lions, they're smart. They don't attack the pack. They attack the straggler. They attack the one who's wandered away. And that's the same thing here. That's what Satan does. Does he attack us? Yes. Does he, does he throw things in our way? Yes. But those who, who are out on their own, he's a roaring lion. Looking for somebody to devour. And I've experienced it. But James says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And in submitting to God, we are submitting our life to him. And we know that he has called us to gather, to be encouraged, to pray together, to learn together, to share our, our hurts together, to share our praises together, to, to be a body of Christ together. And when we do that, we're submitting ourselves to him and to his calling to us, Satan. <laughs> And he flees. He's going to go find the straggler, the wanderer. Because that's what they're looking for. That's what the lion is looking for. So back to what Paul is saying. This is so the multifaceted wisdom may be made known through the church to the rulers, the authorities, and the heavens. Multifaceted. This is the same word in the Greek that Joseph's many colors his coat back in the Old Testament was. You have to look the story up. It's also a word that we use for diamonds. Because when you look at a coat of many colors, it's amazing. I love cars. The paint car, sometimes when you look at it this way, it's this color, and it passes you and it changes colors. That's amazing. Multifaceted. A diamond, when you look at different aspects of it, multifaceted. When you look at the church, multifaceted. And it's God's wisdom that's multifaceted that can save uniquely all of us like this. Again, we are all weirdos. Every one of us is a weirdo, meaning we're different, we're unique, and God created us unique. I would hate to go to church that all look like me. Renata would love that because she's a whole, oh, look at all now. She wouldn't like that either. But because we're all different, and God made us that way, and through the wisdom of Him putting us together, through his power, through what Jesus did on the cross, through his gifting, it is a testimony to the world and to a different realm. To show what Christ has done for us and what Christ has done in us and through us. This is why we must be Christ-centered. This is why we must want be wanting to glorify God. Because that next verse, verse 11, this is according to his eternal purpose Accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. God's eternal purpose was not to make you or me happy. God's eternal purpose was not to give us a great life now. God's eternal purpose was to magnify His Son, to bring us to Him, to give us eternal life so we can know Him and praise Him. It's not about us, it is about Jesus. And then many times we feel we're so insignificant. Oh, we're not like that big church over there. God doesn't care about that. By the way, if you look at some of the churches in the Bible, they were small churches. Small gatherings. And God does many things through that. It's just amazing what God can do through a church. But sometimes we think we are too useless because of what we've done or said. Remember? But God's grace is greater than all of that. We don't feel like his purpose to be accomplished in us in Christ Jesus because of what we've done. But again, that's why God saved us, because we needed that. And if you mean we can't do it by our own power, you're absolutely correct. Yet not I, but through Christ in me, you send that. And no matter what we feel, God is almighty. The last verse we're looking at. In him, we are... Oops, thank you. In him, in him we have boldness. In him, we have confident access through faith in him. What God has given us is himself. We can go before Almighty God with our prayers, 
we can go for Almighty God with our hurts, with our, our blessings to praise Him, with our desires that have been dashed, with the tribulation and heartaches. We can go before Him, but we also can give boldness to live a life in Christ, to show to this world around us, this physical world, that Jesus has changed us, that He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And in doing that, we are making a spectacle in the realm of heaven of what God has done for us. And in front of the demons, boldness to live for Him, boldness to glorify Him, to serve Him inside and outside, to minister to others, to be in action, in action. To be determined and encouraged. And again, you know, because of how God is, is leads me through sermons and, and messages, it's like that's why I chose this verse. Because I, I don't understand his, his splendor and majesty. I don't. I, mean, I can look at his creation and go, wow, man, God, you did all this. I can, I can understand it a little bit as we sing and praise and worship Him and, and we're lifted up as we gather and we see His beauty displayed through us. But what I do know, because of that, they are before Him, but strength and joy are in His place. This is what we are to know as individuals. And when we are living for Christ individually, when we're living for Christ as a body, a church, when we're serving Christ individually, when we're serving Christ as a body, a church, we have strength, we have joy. Not on our own, but because of Him. Satan hates it, and the angels don't understand it. They long to look in. Did I skip over that verse? <laughs> Was it back there? I missed a verse. Because the Bible talks about angels long to look into these things. Because they look at us and go, Man, I, I saw that John guy. I saw what he used to be. I saw how Christ changed him by faith. And they're going, I, I don't understand. They don't understand salvation. They've seen it all. But they, didn't, they haven't experienced it. So they long to look at that. And that's the joy that we have. To live for Christ. To know His strength. To know His joy in the midst of this. And as individuals and as a church, it goes beyond what we can see. So we're closing with a song that says, Take my life. That's a prayer to God. Make me useful, God. And it's all about make, take my life. But in my mind, I keep thinking, take my life. God, take our life. Make me useful. Make us useful today. Let's pray. God, I thank you again for your grace and mercy to us. Your gift to us. Father, may we not dwell on that spiritual realm, but God, that we would dwell on serving you, loving you, because of what you've done for us. God, my prayer for us as a church, that our desire would be you. To know you more, to love you more, to show you more to the world around us. That we would be a church glorifying you. <clears throat> Take our lives. Make us useful for your glory in Christ. It's his name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we sing this hymn, please. <laughs> Take my life, leave me, Lord. Take my life, leave me, Lord. Make my life useful to me. Take my life, leave me, Lord. Take my life, leave me, Lord. 
what? Um, if, if you need to know Christ, I'll tell you there's more joy, more peace, more hope. Don't leave here without him. Talk to me. Talk to somebody you know. If you just need somebody to talk about prayer for a minute, prayer request, don't leave without sharing that with one another. We're all struggling in different ways. We need each other. I'm going to stop. <laughs> Okay, so the first announcement is that we have our website. It has things on it like the sermons, our Bible we're sending for them, and then some other things like what John was saying about the How We Can Pray For You slides. So it has a little thing that you can go to if you want a request of prayer for yourself or other people. You can also do that in the back with our yellow papers. So we have a few places. Um, birthdays, we have a lot this week. On up third, we have Taco. Yeah. On fourth, we have Jeff. Yeah. And on the fifth, we have Grayson. Yeah. For our anniversaries, on the 29th, we have Henry and Carolyn. On Monday at 8.30 a.m., we have coffee and conversations over at Sunny's. Okay. So Tuesday night, we normally have Bible study with our young adult group, but on the very last Tuesday night of the month, we gather here for food, fun, fellowship, games. So this Tuesday night is bring your favorite cereal. We will provide the milk and maybe some other breakfast <laughs> things and then just come prepared to play games. And where's Emily? She's on. It starts at 6.38. Okay. And this is for you graduated high school, up to 30, single, married, all that in between. Perfect. Um, Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock, we have men's prayer here. And then they go over to the Lips Pancake House. Also on Wednesday, in the afternoon at 6.30, we have our Bible study over Why Trust the Old Testament. And then we have game night this week, on Friday at 6.30. And again, for our website, we have offering on the website, or you can have offering in the back if you would like to give. Mm -hmm. Alright, our women's ministry is coming out this next Sunday. It's going to be a salad supper, so bring a salad to share. We're also going to be sharing some of the things we've learned at our women sharpened, or I am sharpened fire. Women aren't sharpening anything, maybe, uh, I don't know, something, a parent guys just in the kitchen. I don't know. <laughs> um, I am sharpened with iron for women. So if you went to that conference, and hopefully you'll be able to come to the salad supper, Spend some time this week reviewing your notes. You don't have to give a big, long speech. Just a few, couple things that God showed you at the conference. Those of you that did not go to the conference, I'm going to ask you to share something that God is showing you through your personal Bible study or a group Bible study that you're in or just during your prayer time. So just come. It doesn't, like I said, have to be a long speech. Just, you know, a sentence or two of what God is showing you right now in your life. So that's going to be next Sunday, right downstairs, 4 o'clock. Bring, like I said, a salad and then uh, something that God is teaching you. Thank you. Thank you. My turn again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Young Ladies Week will be May 16th uh, from 6.30 to 8. It's our last one of the school year. And so we are actually at the yes, 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 we're going to have a review game. So, Study your notes a little bit, finish your hard work, and be ready to answer some fun questions. <clears throat> All right, we do have summer events that are coming up. It's one of these orange pieces of paper that are back there. Um, we do have some, one of the first things that comes up is our Bible camp. We have some forms out there to the right. So if you're interested in going to the Bible camp, take a form. Also let me know if you plan on doing that. This is for those who have completed third grade through the 12th grade. and. Uh, we, we help you as a, a church with expenses of that, and, if, and so that's also explained there with that. All right, and then last week we did Compassion Sunday. Uh, we have now, last week we have eight sponsors. We gained one from here, so we have nine children sponsored, but also two people who are watching online, 
sponsored a child too. So now we have 11 through our church sponsored children. There's more kids back there. Uh, never, never push, but you know, it's just like $43 a month. If you go to McDonald's twice, you definitely are spending that much money, especially if it's a family, that's one. Um, you know, it's, we, we spend money on what we want to spend money on. Um, and the gift that God's been using this compassion ministries to help others is amazing. And so again, it's not a pressure. I always pray about it. Um, but that's that's just a great gift. So I'm, I just thank God for what he's been doing through New Hope. We are a very unusual church in how we reach in this many spe ministry especially, but so many different ministries. All right, so then this right here, this is our who we how we operate. We glorify God in worship and obedience. We grow in God's word and action. We go to share and serve so others will glorify God. Because we want our gospel present to transform this community. And so on the way out today, uh, I have a gift for each household. It's, it's a refrigerator magnet with this. Uh, I encourage you, I call it refrigerator magnet, but you can put it on your refrigerator because most of them, you can do that. And I, I'm pretty sure that most of us go to the refrigerator at least once a day. This is a reminder to pray for us, for all of us, for us as we operate in this world, as God has called us to do that. It gives you the three different things in our strategy of how we want to reach out in these three things. And so I will give you one of these on the way out. Um, again, try to keep it to one. If you have two families in your, in your household, that's okay. Get two if you have two refrigerators. <laughs> We have two refrigerators. That's because of the job. That's why. And I like to eat. So, but that's on the way out. Any other any other uh, announcements this morning? All right, very thankful. And so that's what we need to do. So we're going to sing that third verse of, of joyful joy because I just love that. God is giving and he's forgiving. But in, the, in that he continues to give us joy. So let's stand as we sing this as we close.
what you were doing and they would do what you're doing now. Well, they've got a steam program down there, but they're not going to do that. I, I tried to get in on that, but yeah. they're not going to pay me the steam program. Right. Yeah. 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 When the economy, it might be good that I mean, you're young, you've got lots of money. You've got lots of money. You never know. I don't know right, why. Right now, I'm going to stay. Good. For we're now. glad. We're glad. Yeah, so. we're happy, so. We'll see what happens. I'm going to work with you tomorrow on it. Wow, I'm starting to go Oh, okay. I just had a 
Change the the fonts and stuff. Like, I guess I could have done that orientation. Oh well, I too late. I, yeah, I was curious. I didn't think about it. Because sometimes the sales. Pro Hello, keep on. That was a long. 